walk with me. In fact, the story I'm about to share with you saw me walking to my car when I was stopped by the most acidic words ever said to me. It is difficult to see you go back to the Stone Age, she said. Stone Age. The jab was clearly taken at my hijab, the Islamic headscarf I was wearing at that time, and my abaya, a loose, outer-fitting garment. You've seen Arab women wear it. Originally, I'm from Pakistan, grew up in New Jersey. I just like wearing the abaya. It's my summer outfit. <laughs> really is. And I started wearing the hijab in November 2010. This incident followed in summer of 2011. I had started wearing the hijab after performing the Hajj, the spiritual journey to Mecca, the largest religious gathering on the planet. Ladies and gentlemen, the Hajj is a lifelong dream for Muslims around the world. And it is also symbolic of starting over, a cue for many women, many Muslim women around the world, to start wearing the hijab. I was one of those women, wanted to do the Hajj, wanted to wear the hijab. Two lifelong dreams accomplished. But here I was being told that I had just entered the Stone Age. But I'm not in the Stone Age, I said, really thankful for not being rendered speechless by the exchange. I'm a modern woman, just like you. Aren't you going to tell me how come only women have to cover and not men? But men do have to be modest, I said. Men have to lower their gaze. Plus, you shouldn't believe everything the media tells you, I said. Oh, it's not the media, it's me. Oh, okay, it's just you, then good. <laughs> I left it at that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the hijab is a mandatory part of a religion. A beautiful part of a religion that we embrace with heart and mind. It is our veil, our modesty, our honor, our beauty personified. I shared the incident with a few friends the next day, a few non-Muslim friends who, let's just say, were a little bit more than mad. After I calmed them down, the question came up. A dear friend said, Kieran, you're a journalist. You've got to start talking about this. You've got to start writing about this. Tell us what it means. Why is it important? Why do you embrace it? Why? Good point. But before I did that, I knew I had to go talk to this woman who probably would do this again. Probably. Possibly. And I did just that. I said, Stone Age is not a compliment. Not a good thing comes out of that one. And in her defense, she apologized, but added really quickly, am I not entitled to my opinion? Your opinion ends where my jugular begins. I left it at that. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's the premise here. The hijab is not symbolic of oppression. Husbands, fathers, Sons, second cousins, nobody's forcing us to wear it. Nobody should force us to wear it. We do it because it's progress for Muslim women. We do it because we are embracing our religion fully and we do it with pride. Non-negotiable in your lunch rooms, non-negotiable by the water cooler. We wear it in public, we wear it at puberty. Around men we're not related to and yes, we take it off when we go home. Wearing the hijab also does not mean that you become dowdy. And Islam, a religion of peace and logic, does not say wear black only. A friend who's smiling right now made me count mine, 100 plus. That picture is not on my walk-in closet and that doesn't even cut half of it. <laughs> Materials, designs, I see a hijab, I stop. I don't know, it's a thing, I stop. Not a thing about the hijab limits us. Not a thing. 2011 saw Tawakkal Karman from Yemen win the Nobel Peace Prize. She shared it for championing women's rights. 2012 London Olympics saw a string of hijabi athletes, archers, Iranian soccer team, archers, judo karate experts, heavyweight lifters, women who can bench press all of us probably together. <laughs> Just saying, I don't know, but probably. Swimming, cricket, badminton, baseball, basketball, you, know, you name it, we can do it very well every day. Every day with the hijab on. Many of you, hundreds of you joined us on February 1st this year to celebrate World Hijab Day. 
ladies and gentlemen, a beautiful event where we asked you to come try on a hijab, and many of you did. And this is what you shared. You said, you can look at my eyes better now. You're concentrating on me. I look beautiful. I look like a princess. We feel that every day while embracing our faith. Center court at the local mall, 12 hijabi, non-hijabi, Muslim, and non-Muslim women brought to you an amazing event. Ladies and gentlemen, our Mayor Blake looked beautiful in a hijab on. Emily's Mike Allen, hi Mike. And Don Scott stood with us and said beautiful words about the hijab, which were so very much appreciated. CNN, ladies and gentlemen, 100 plus countries celebrated it around the world that day on February 1st. Fort McMurray got picked and highlighted. Local coverage as well. We appreciated all of you coming and standing with us to celebrate something that is not negotiable, that we embrace with beauty, modesty, and honor. Speaking of which, local community leaders, hijabi community leaders are making a difference every day. Samra Elias, she's here right now, I'm not gonna point her out. Program delivery supervisor for the government of Alberta, helping families every day, every day, with the hijab on. Her staffers and coworkers will tell you that they've worn the hijab courtesy of Samra because she talks about it. And she wears it with pride. Muna Yusuf, United Bureau of Fort McMurray, also here. Look at that smile. Social profit agencies in town will tell you that if it wasn't for Muna, their community investment coordinator, they wouldn't be able to do their job well when it comes to United Way Connections. Muna does it all with the hijab every day. Hala Murshid, community leader, World Hijab Day YMM co-founder and a youth advocate. Yep, those three pointers, she's got them. And did I mention she's got a black belt in karate? She'll probably chop me in the parking lot after this, but hey, <laughs> you get the point. Rida Ikram, Mayor's Advisory Council on Youth, student leader, volunteer, one of my first go-tos when it comes to organizing events. Tell us again, it's limiting. Do these women, do I look like I'm waiting to be liberated? Do I sound like I need you to liberate me? <laughs> Hijabi volunteers are making a difference every day in our community, in communities around the world. Around the world. Again, not a thing stops us. Not a thing says you can't do this because you've got the hijab on. With pride, with passion, and knowing we are embracing our religion every day. Walk with me again. What makes us afraid? Why do we hesitate before we ask questions? Why is it easier to judge, to be afraid, and start a cycle of hate than to just come and ask questions? Without agendas, without motives, without the thought to go and get someone. When we tell racist jokes in our family rooms and in our living rooms, and when we insist we're just kidding, our children are not buying it. Not for a single second. They will repeat it as is in the classroom, on the playground. And then one day, a child comes crying home because someone somewhere in their class, on the playground, said a horrible word to them. Or a horrible judgment. And that's where a mother sits down and has to explain why something is. Because we don't want to ask questions. Still afraid? Ladies and gentlemen, then all it takes is making the choice to come and ask those questions. Have that conversation. A friend once said, it's better to be curious than to be indifferent. Indifference begets fear. Fear can possibly become hate, and hate is destroying us. <coughs> Islam is a religion of peace, 
of logic. And we are here to answer those questions. We have to do this today for our children, for ourselves, because if we don't, then our tomorrow is being destroyed. And guess what? So is our today. You don't want to do it for yourself? Fine. Do it for your children. Do it to save today so we can save tomorrow because tomorrow just might be too late. Ladies and gentlemen, all it takes is making the choice to embrace equality, peace, and justice for everyone. Thank you.